Relationships of organisms. An organism is any independent living thing. It can be as small as bacteria and as large as a whale. There are many relationships involving these organisms. These relationships can help organisms as well as harm organisms. Examples of these relationships are producer-consumer, predator-prey, and parasite-host. All of these relationships involve two or more organisms, and all organisms involved in the relationship are affected in a negative or positive way. There are many more relationships between organisms, but we're just going to cover six. The other relationships we're going to cover are scavenger decomposer, competitive, mutually beneficial, and dependent independent. Producers. Producers are typically any kind of green plant that gets its energy from the sun. Producers make their own food and make this food by absorbing energy from the sun during photosynthesis. Producers are termed autotrophs because they are self-nourished and do not depend on other species to feed. After the producers make their own food and grow, their job in the ecosystem becomes food for the consumers. Examples of producers are plants, trees, and algae. Consumers. Consumers are any organism that eat another organism. Several types of consumers exist, which we will get to shortly. Consumers need to eat other living things in order to have enough energy to survive or reproduce. Consumers are organisms, including humans, that get their energy from producers regarding the flow of energy through an ecosystem. Consumers dominate most of the food chain. This means that most of the food chain consists of consumers because there are several different types of consumers that overtake producers. A bear is an example of a consumer. Types of consumers. Consumers are subdivided into groups based on their food source. Primary consumers are species that feed directly on producers, plant-eating species. They are also called herbivores. Elephants, cattle, and deer are examples. Secondary consumers are species that feed on primary consumers. Secondary and higher order consumers are called carnivores. Lion and fox are an example. Tertiary and higher level consumers are species that obtain their nourishment by eating other meat eating species. Multiple level consumers are species that obtain their nourishment by eating both plant and animal species. These are called omnivores. Most humans fall into this category. Predator-prey relationship. A predator is a type of carnivore that kills its food. The organism that that predator feeds upon is the prey. An example of this relationship can be a wolf and a rabbit. The words predator and prey are almost always used to mean only animals that eat animals, but the same concept also applies to plants. Bear and a berry, rabbit and lettuce, and a grasshopper eating a leaf are also all examples of predator-prey relationships. The prey is part of the predator's environment, and the predator dies if it does not get food, so it evolves whatever is necessary in order to eat the prey. Speed, stealth, camouflage, to hide while approaching the prey, a good sense of smell, sight, or hearing to find the prey, immunity to the prey's poison, poison to kill the prey, the right kind of mouth parts or digestive system, etc. Likewise, the predator is part of the prey's environment, and the prey dies if it is eaten by the predator, so it evolves whatever is necessary to avoid being eaten. Speed, camouflage to hide from the predator, a good sense of smell, sight, or hearing to detect the predator, thorns, poison, to spray when approached or bitten. Parasite-host relationship. A parasitic relationship is one in which one organism, the parasite, lives off another organism, the host, harming it and possibly causing death. The parasite lives on or in the body of the host for food or nutrition. A few examples of parasites are tapeworms, fleas, and barnacles. Usually, although parasites harm their host, it is the parasite's best interest not to kill the host because it relies on the host's body and body functions, such as digestion or blood circulation, to live. A parasite and its host evolve together. The parasite adapts to its environment by living in and using the host in ways that harm it. Hosts also develop ways of getting rid of or protecting themselves from parasites. For example, they can scratch away ticks. 
Some hosts can build a symbiotic relationship with another organism that helps get rid of the parasite. Scavenger decomposer relationship. Some animals eat dead animals or carry on. They are called scavengers. They help break down or reduce organic material into smaller pieces. These smaller pieces are then eaten by decomposers. Decomposers eat dead animals and break them down into chemical parts. Nitrogen, carbon, and other nutrients can then be used again by plants and animals. Without decomposers, the scavengers, the world, would be covered with dead plants and animals. Mutually beneficial slash competitive relationship. Relationships between organisms can be mutually beneficial to both species. For example, relationship between flowers and insects is a mutually supportive relationship. Or parasitic in that such a relationship benefits only one party. Examples include ticks, fleas, mosquitoes, mistletoe plants, and fungi. Competitive relationships are when plant and animal species compete over food, water, territory, and mating with the opposite sex. No two species can occupy the same food or space successfully in a stable community. Closely related species therefore live far from one another. This is because plants and animals must compete for water, nutrients, light, and space. The outcome of this competition determines the character of an ecosystem. Dependency. Organism dependency is when all living organisms depend on plants for survival, even humans. If we did not have plants, which are producers, we would not have food for our herbivores to eat, such as cows, goats, chickens, sheep, and cattle. Humans eat all of these herbivores and need to eat them or plants to survive and couldn't if we did not have plants. Basically, there is a big chain revolving the, and relying on plants. This is the food chain. The producers are the start of it, and then it goes consumers, which are the herbivores and carnivores, secondary consumers, and eventually back to producers. Without the producers, the food chain would not exist, and this shows the importance of plants in the environment. On a different note, organisms depend on one another for food, which we've talked about, and in the parasite-host relationship, protection and shelter are provided as well. Producer-consumer relationship. Consumers eat producers, so with no producers, you have no consumers. No consumers can lead to several problems in the ecosystem. Consumers basically control producers and the fate of them. Symbiosis. Symbiosis is close and often long-term interaction between different biological species. Several different types of relationships exist within symbiosis. One species can benefit while the other is harmed. One species can benefit while the other is unaffected. And both species can benefit in the relationship. Commensalism is a mutually interaction between two different species in which one organism benefits but the other is neither harmed nor helped in any way. Mutualism is a type of species interaction in which both participating species benefit. Parasitism is when one organism benefits and the other is harmed. Examples of all of these are commensalism, barnacles adhering to the skin of a whale. Mutualism, bumblebees sucking nectar out of a flower. Parasitism, fleas on a dog. Some more relationships are neutralism, which describes the relationship between two species which do interact but do not affect each other. It is to describe interactions where the fitness of one species has absolutely no effect whatsoever on that of the other. Neutralism, the most common type of interspecific interaction, neither population affects the other. Any interactions that do occur are indirect or incidental. Tarantula living in a desert and the cacti living in a desert, neither one affects the other. 
population changes. Population fluctuations are mainly affected by relationships. As population of one organism increases, the other organism in the relationship will most likely be affected. This works the same way for a decrease in one of the organism's population. The food chain slash food web will be affected by change in population because if there are less producers at the bottom of the chain, there can only be a certain number of consumers who feed on the producers.